Hello and welcome to another episode of MRCOG Mastery in 10 Questions. What are the five bones of the fetal cranium? The four sutures and the two fontanelles. What are the five key diameters you need to know? And how do they relate to vertex, deflexed OP, face and brow presentations? Are face and brow presentations compatible with vaginal delivery? Let's explore these and other questions in this episode. Let's start with the basics. What are the five bones of the fetal cranium? The five bones are two frontal bones, two parietal bones, and one occipital bone. These bones are separated by sutures and the fontanelles. Question two, what are the four sutures of the fetal cranium? The first is the frontal suture found between, you guessed it, the two frontal bones. The second is the sagittal suture found between the two parietal bones. The third is the coronal suture found between the frontal and the parietal bones. And finally, the lambdoid suture found between the parietal bones and the occipital bone. Question 3. What are the two main fontanelles of the fetal skull? Fontanelles mean soft spots and these are the unossified membranous tissues found between the cranial bones. The anterior fontanel, also called bregma, is diamond-shaped and lies between the two halves of the frontal bones and the two halves of the parietal bones. The posterior fontanel, also called lambda, is triangular-shaped and lies between the two halves of the parietal bones and the occipital bone. Note that the anterior fontanel is not so much anterior but at the top of the skull. We are on to question four. When do the fontanelles ossify? The fibrous membranes of the anterior fontanel ossifies and closes at around 18 months of infant's life. The posterior fontanel ossifies a little earlier at around one year of infant's life. Question five. What is the vertex, sincipate and occipate? It's easier to show this on a figure. So if you have a look at the image here, this is the vertex here, this is the sincipate, and this is the occiput. Question six, what are the key diameters of the fetal head? There are five that you need to remember, you need to know. The first is suboccipital pragmatic diameter, which is 9.5 centimeters. This runs from the middle of bragma or the anterior fontanel to the undersurface of the occipital bone. The second is the suboccipital frontal diameter, which is 10.5 centimeters in length. This runs from the prominent point of the frontal bone to the undersurface of the occipital bone. The third is the occipital frontal diameter, which is 11.5 centimeters in length. Occipital frontal diameter goes from the prominent point of the frontal bone to the prominent point of the occipital bone. The fourth is the mental vertical diameter, which is long at 13 centimeters, and this runs from the chin to the prominent point of the vertex. And finally, submental pragmatic diameter, which is 9.5 centimeters in length. This runs from just behind the chin to the bragma or the anterior fontanel. You also need to know the biparietal diameter, which is 9.5 centimeters in length. You're on to question seven. How do the various fetal head diameters relate to various presentations? So let's look at vertex presentation. With vertex presentation, it is the suboccipital pragmatic diameter 
that is the presenting diameter. And this is 9.5 centimeters, which is short, which is great because that bodes well for vaginal birth. The fetal head circumference is the smallest in this diameter, measuring about 32 centimeters. With the deflexed OP presentation, the head is deflexed and we have the occipital frontal diameter presenting, which is, of course, 11.5 centimeters. With face presentation, we have submental pragmatic diameter presenting. This is 9.5 centimeters. And finally, with brow presentation, we have mental vertical diameter presenting, which is, of course, very large at 13 centimeters. Okay, from anatomy to clinical application, question eight. Can face presentation deliver vaginally? Let's remember this first. If face presentation is due to the hyperextension of the fetal neck, like this. In about 90% of face presentations, the fetal head is mental anterior, which is great as the head can then flex and allow vaginal delivery. What if the presentation is mental posterior? Well, in the first instance, expectant management is fine as the head may rotate as it reaches the pelvic floor, making vaginal birth possible. This happens in about 20 to 30% of mental posterior presentations. But in the remaining 70 to 80% of mental posterior presentations, vaginal birth is not possible and so a cesarean section will be needed. So what you need to remember here is that mental anterior face presentation is compatible with vaginal birth, but with persistent mental posterior presentation, a cesarean section is indicated. Question 9. Can a brow presentation deliver vaginally? Persistent brow presentation with a very long presenting diameter of 13 centimeters cannot deliver vaginally. But don't rush the patient to theater as brow presentation may revert to a vertex or face presentation making vaginal birth possible. If, however, brow presentation persists, then a cesarean section is indicated. And the final question, question 10. How do you tell the difference between mouth and anus of the fetus when you examine a woman in labor? Well, you might think that this should be obvious, but it isn't always so. Obviously, a mouth will be presenting with a face presentation, but you will have the anus presenting with a breech presentation. So how can you tell the difference? Well, the answer is the gum. The margins of the gum are hard to palpate, so that should help you identify the mouth from the anus. You may also be able to feel other structures, such as the orbital ridge and the nose, to differentiate between the two. Great, that is the end of the MRCOG Mastery on Fetal Skull, Fetal Diameters, How They Relate to Fetal Presentation, and which presentations are compatible with vaginal delivery. We hope you found this useful and we hope to see you again in another video or perhaps indeed at the MRCOG weekend course. Until then, have fun with your revision. <laughs>